Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Robert Stickle. I'm also joined by my colleague, Jim Patterson. Jim will be today's presenter and will discuss the topic of how OnePlan aligns with Microsoft's project portfolio management vision. This webinar is a new addition to our series of adaptive webinars, so if you enjoy this video, feel free to watch the others we have available on our channel and look towards the next installment, which we'll be releasing soon. And as always, I hope that today's presentation grants you some insight into the world of project and portfolio management and gets you excited for the new developments happening within the industry and here at OnePlan. Thank you again. I'll now turn the presentation over to Jim. Thanks, Robert. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, you know, these are exciting times. Uh, Microsoft is transitioning in what they're doing with project management and portfolio management uh, from a technology and a solution perspective. And uh, OnePlan being a, um, a respected partner in that Microsoft ecosystem, we uh, always try to make sure that we're aligned with where Microsoft's going so that we can support those Microsoft customers and clients in the way to get the most value out of the technologies that they invest in. So that's the focus of our presentation today. Now, we're proud to say that just this week, we were announced once again, uh, and we're recognized yet again, uh, five years in a row, uh, as a global PPM leader for five consecutive years. We've either been a winner of that award or a finalist of that award five consecutive years in the running. So the thought leadership and the technology things that we're doing for the customers of Microsoft are being recognized uh, consistently uh, over the years. And we get that type of thought leadership recognition uh, by the folks and the analysts like the Gartner Group or Infotech Research uh, and, and others, um, because we really, our passion is about project and portfolio management and bringing these disciplines and the modern uh, twists to those disciplines uh, to the customers themselves. So uh, we're, we're, we're proud to be able to share that information. And in large part, it's because we also are extending the vision Microsoft has regarding the use of partners in their ecosystem. And a number of their partners that focus in the project and portfolio management realm also partner with OnePlan to deliver the things that we're gonna show you today. So it's in no small part to the fact that we are synergizing with Microsoft's partner strategy that we're recognized uh, for our leadership here as well. So what do we mean by transition? Well, since the fall of 2019, Microsoft already announced loosely at least that they plan to reimagine project and end the investments in Project Online. So many of you use Microsoft Project on the desktop, but also use Project Online uh, from a portfolio and you know, server-based repository for all this project information. Well, that is not the future where Microsoft's going. They've ended investments in Project Online and it's still here, but that will change. And meaning at some point, there is some new technologies that you need to consider. Uh, the vision moving forward is that Microsoft is going to provide PPM uh, capabilities leveraging the M365 platform, and it will be different than what's in Project Online. So what vision do they have for all this? Well, it's a more modern vision for work management and the way uh, Microsoft views the demand out in the marketplace today. They say that teams want to work the way they want. There's flexible methodologies and modern and more agile ways of working that teams are wanting but also executives still need to get the results and the visibility that they need in order to make decisions to manage their business. So hence, Microsoft Project is moving to a more modern, collaborative types of solution, maybe more intuitive, uh, and that's consistent with the rest of the things in the Microsoft Cloud Platform in order to help enable and to fulfill this vision. So what are the things that we're trying to accomplish? What gaps are we trying to fill? Well, in this day and age, you know, we all manage projects in our organizations, but we're all not necessarily classically trained to do so. The dedicated trained project manager isn't always the person managing projects today. It might be an engineer who just gets tapped on the shoulder and so we need you to manage this project and then they have to be effective at getting that done. We believe that collaboration is critical, but because of the diverse and distributed nature or even the global uh, distributed nature of our, of our um, workforces, it can be chaotic and work is happening everywhere and also coming at us from all directions within our organization. We also wanna manage work our way, meaning that there's different methodologies and approaches depending on the type of work that we do. Uh, but oftentimes the legacy tools that the organization provides doesn't allow for that and maybe ties our hands a bit. Uh, hence, organizations and teams and people out there, sometimes with the 
the ready availability of cloud tools end up going out and selecting their own tools to make this stuff happen, creating a kind of shadow IT with tools that maybe the organization isn't fully aware of or fully supports. So what it leads to is that we want to use our data effectively, but because of all these different tools and the proliferation of that in organizations, there's a lot of silos of information and pockets of information. It's very hard and at least a mess to bring that data together for reporting. And that process tends to be very manual in mashing all that up. And we need to make better decisions, but if all that manual mashup is not happening or happening in a timely basis, no one has the big picture, very easily at least, uh, within those organizations. And we're trying to bridge these gaps. So to make this more accessible, Microsoft Project has been reimagined into Microsoft Project for the web. And you're looking on the screen here, a web-based animation where I'm looking at a timeline or a Gantt chart. Now I'm looking at a board that allows me to do things in a more Kanban basis like you would do in Planner. And even just using lists or grids as we call them, much like working in a spreadsheet, are different modes of working that people might be able to work in, things that you didn't, be, didn't used to be able to do in Microsoft Project on the desktop. The idea is to make it easier, simple, and a fresh new modern experience that the modern worker wants to work in. It also is trying to make things like collaboration easy with things like co-authoring like you're used to in things like Microsoft Word. The idea is to have it to be an innovative platform that um, even the casual or occasional project manager can thrive in. Now, this new Microsoft PPM solution um, and uh, with Project for the Web is built on a different platform than Project Online was. Project Online was built on a SharePoint Online foundation. And the new Microsoft uh, project and work management is built on the Power Platform. So Project for the Web is leveraging Dataverse, which is the database repository in the Power Platform. It's leveraging Power BI for reports and analytics, Power Automate for workflow automation, and, and uh, 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 some data exchange. And then Power Apps for, to, be, uh, to be able to provide no-code and low-code applications for Project for the Web to work within and let organizations do those for themselves to a large part. And this is the platform that Microsoft's working in. Now, that being said, it is a shift for the Project Online users. But uh, I put this slide up just because, you know, Satya Nadella is committed to having Power Platform being core to what Microsoft is doing as a company. So along with Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365, the Power Platform is strategic for Microsoft. So you should feel comfortable going in that direction if you're a Microsoft shop. Now also, you know, the largest and quickest uptake of a technology ever in Microsoft history is Microsoft Teams. And Project for the Web will use Teams for content and collaboration. So where Project Online used SharePoint at the back end, Teams is really the focal point to provide a hub of that type of information for content and bring it into line and also have access to your project for the web schedules in here as well. Now, if we use that Dataverse repository where all the Microsoft Project for the Web data is stored, you could use it just as a file repository or a data repository and just open up your individual projects for your own purpose. I mean, that's in its simplistic format, but that's not really where the real power is. Because that data is all in Dataverse, we can also provide solutions in Power Apps and, and other methods to be, be able to provide you know, portfolio management capabilities to some degree. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Now, because Power Apps is a low code, no code platform with the vision of uh, non-developers being able to create their own applications, that's a great vision. But in this day and age, a lot of folks are not comfortable trying to, or with the requirement of having to build things from scratch. So Having pre-built solutions that are already available in Power Apps is something that's very attractive to people. And one plan was actually solicited by Microsoft to assist them in building a accelerator for a Project for the Web in Power Apps. And this accelerator is available with your Microsoft Project for the Web license, meaning the things that I'm going to show you in Power Apps are available pre-built so that you can start to work with them. And we're proud to say that we were uh, affiliated with that. Now, what does the Project Accelerator provide? Well, I talked about you could use Project for the Web here in the green, that you can create a project or projects, and you can create tasks and build plans and do that within Project for the Web by itself. But it needs something like the accelerator to provide additional capabilities. For example, 
If you want to track things like issues, risks, changes, have status reports, maybe some KPIs around that, the Power Platform and Power Apps gives the ability to have a place to do that. If you wanted to have, say, project requests that ultimately become projects, Power Apps provides that in the accelerator as well. There's also program level where you might have a collection of projects that are really aggregated or working together in a common program uh, effort or work stream. And to be able to aggregate those into programs, the Power Apps um, um, Accelerator gives you the ability to do that. And then reporting uh, as part of this Power Platform, uh, you do have the ability to provide portfolio level and project and task level reporting via Power BI with pre-built dashboards and reports that you can start with and then add to on your own. So these are the core capabilities that you have if you do Project for the Web in conjunction with Power Apps and the Accelerator in the Power Platform. Now, demand management is a request list. It may be a companion report around that to kind of assess the demand that's coming in and make selections. The program management to aggregate projects into programs. There's views for that in the actual application and in the Power BI reports. Project management. Project for the Web allows you, as we said, to do project scheduling and project work management in a grid, a board, or a timeline view, and that's what it does. The risk management might be a power app that you put together uh, that's part of the accelerator, and it actually allows you to have a risk log for your projects and then re corresponding reports around that and dashboards. Same thing holds true with issues. Also in change management. Very important component. If you want to have changes along a project and have them submitted, approved, and have a record of those so that we have all the approved changes uh, at our fingertips when people actually do postmortems, for example, on a project, the dashboards and, and area in the Power App and the accelerator for, for that is there. And the same thing with status reports. Yes, there's the objective data that would pull from the schedules and such, but then people often want to have narrative based status reports in there. There's a home for that in the accelerator as well. Project intelligence, as I had mentioned, there's an accelerator and a Power BI and a, and a Project for the Web report pack that you can get started with right out of the box. And then based on the O data that's available from that, you can actually uh, uh, fashion your own reports based upon that same data source if you like to have some variations of that theme. Now that being said, the accelerator really provides portfolio management capabilities up to a certain point. And that there's certain things, especially time phase data areas that, you know, is still needed. But according to Gartner, critical capabilities would include these things in the blue, which would include time management, which essentially is timesheets. Uh, financial management, which is more than maybe just lump sum financials. It might be more cost categories, CapEx and OpEx and other more time phased uh, data around that. And be able to track things like, um, you know, budgets and original and then revised forecasts and actuals, for example, against those things. Resource capacity planning, which is a very time phase type of thing that's needed, as well as additional project portfolio management capabilities like what if analysis, et cetera. So these are some things that uh, aren't inherent in the um, uh, accelerator and project for the web by itself. So what do we do with that? Well, we extend that in one plan actually provides capabilities to extend this vision in the Power Platform to provide the capabilities that are needed and do so in a very seamless fashion. So one plan is designed to connect strategy all the way down to execution. Uh, and where the accelerator, for example, is designed to just use Project for the Web as a scheduling tool, uh, one plan adds the ability to the mix to be able to still use your Microsoft Project Professional or Project Desktop plans into the mix or even your Agile tools you might be using like Azure DevOps and have those fold into the portfolio of data as well. So these are things that are net ads beyond what can be done just in the accelerator should you have the need to do these things. So if one plan extends the accelerator, what we're looking there on the screen is the things that the accelerator provides that I've already just covered. But then if we look at in the blue, what one plan can provide is uh, a strategic level with, uh, with OKRs. Uh, additional portfolio management capability with prioritization and what if analysis and more, um, let's just say, uh, rich portfolio views for analysis purposes. The financials, which I talked about, the resource capacity planning that I talked about, and then even things like a timesheet or even simply for those that don't need a timesheet, a my work area where all work for that's assigned to an individual 
can be accessed and uh, statused in one place without having to bop around from project to project. So these are things that one plan at its core can add to um, Project for the Web and the Accelerator, all in sync of um, being dovetailed with what Microsoft's offering today, and also in the transition from Project Online, knowing that what's there today does not have full feature parity with Project Online, the additional of one plan capabilities will provide not only that feature parity, but even some features that Project Online didn't have itself. Now, on top of that, we talked about additional connections. So instead of just using Project for the Web, because some organizations are not just using Project for the Web today, they may be using Azure DevOps, they may be using Project Desktop, they might be using things like Jira or Smartsheet, for example. And those things could be accommodated, even though we're going to uh, put our portfolio management solution into a Microsoft technology. So one plan adds complete strategic portfolio management also in and of itself. So for example, if you're using Project for the Web and you're maybe not committed or the organization has not yet adopted a Power App strategy, we can provide all those additional capabilities by adding those capabilities from one plan to Project for the Web. So the strategy, the project request, the portfolio, the program management, all the issue risk and changes, that can happen in one plan, but leveraging the schedules from Microsoft Project for the Web as an alternative, should that be something that you wanna do and, and, and aren't able to do it in Power Apps. So what does one plan provide as far as capabilities if we look at it? We have the intake side of things where we can actually have leaders outline strategies and execute on those strategies that we can align with. We can have ideas and requests that can be captured, vetted, prioritized, and selected, and possibly promoted into projects. And even light enterprise architecture things, things that we need to consider, like our application portfolio or our business capabilities or the products that might be impacted, these are things that can be factored into the mix uh, with one plan. On the planning side, your portfolio managers, you know, in choosing uh, and selecting the things that we want to work on, we have robust portfolio planning views and capabilities. The resource capacity planning I talked about in a very detailed way. The financial tracking in cost categories and cost types of uh, and whatever methods that you want to use for that. On the execution side, once we decide what we're going to work on, to be able to have the work planning and project for the web you know, and bringing that data into uh, uh, one plan, the agile planning that's in there that could come from an agile tool or built right within one plan itself, and then the connectors of a variety of different tool sets of which Project for the Web is one of them. It allows us to use the tools of choice that we have, but have it fold into this overall solution that one plan provides along with the Microsoft technologies. And then the team members be able to do a timesheet or status the work that they've been given across all the project efforts that they have of all work types is very important to a lot of organizations. And in the delivery and the results side of things, the status reports are a natural output of the process. The dashboards in Power BI, robust. And then visualizations of how all these things interrelate is very key, especially if you're doing things like strategic alignment or strategic portfolio management with the enterprise architecture elements. On top of that, one plan has introduced their Sophia GPT, which is an artificial intelligence assistant that allows us to augment the way we plan and analyze our work in this project and portfolio management context. So the key here is, is that we have the intake and the selection stuff to make sure that we do the right work, but then we have the tools to make sure we do the work right and do it well. So those integrations that we talked about, this is not a custom code, one-off integration things that we do with APIs. Yes, we use APIs of the solutions, but we have productized connectors for a growing number of popular tools out there. We talked about Azure DevOps and Jira in the software development or ad, you know, uh, agile world. We talked about the project and work management tools like Project and Project for the Web, but also things like financial systems or other ideation systems or CRM systems for professional services or even service management tools. These are a variety of tools that are productized in the one plan offering to bring these things to the mix so they can all fold into a common portfolio management platform. So what do we add to what um, I showed you in the screens for the project accelerator? Well, 
um, let's just say uh, additional analysis and portfolio views that we can work with that not only include um, the project for the web plans, but also plans that might come in from a variety of other tools as well. The ability to do portfolio prioritization and setup in a very flexible and calculated way. Looking at your portfolio from a board or Kanban view, so those more agile oriented teams can actually work with this in those ways with flexible columns and swim lanes. Roadmap views for those product oriented type of people that wanna see their portfolio in that perspective. Portfolio tree, a hierarchy that allows you to manage your portfolio and structure the way you like, and then the resource capacity planning around that. Not only that, but resource negotiations between project and resource managers. Project pro resource prioritization in what if modes and be able to look at what it's gonna take to deliver the projects that we have on our plate and select the things that we might have to deselect or do out later in the future in order to meet um, the restrictions or the constraints we have on the resources we have at hand. Same thing with financial planning. We can do detailed financial plans, but then we can also then do what if analysis based on selecting things within our limitations and our constraints of our budgets. The My Work area, where a user can go in and see everything they've been assigned and provide all their status updates easily in one place. The timesheet, be able to report time for people that want to do capitalization of labor or uh, chargebacks internally, or even external projects to external clients that you have to build them. And the insights in AI that we're gonna talk about you know, it really gives an individual user insights to the things that require their attention, uh, uh, access to conversations that may be happening around the tasks of the project that are on, easy access to the projects that they have, as well as consistent reporting at the project status report level and even at the more portfolio and program level dashboard and analytics, more as a natural output of the process. So what one plan does is it really fuses you into the tools that you work in every day. Um, it's designed so that you can work with it, as I said, in the uh, Power Apps and in the Accelerator, or it can just work in your own browser the way you want standalone. But also it's designed so it can be fused in not only Power Apps, but it's an authorized Microsoft Teams application that you can actually um, uh, access and work with within Teams or add to any team or channel within Teams. We also have an extension so that you can actually work with the OnePlan capabilities while you're in Azure DevOps. Not only do we connect to it, but we can actually work with it while you're in Azure DevOps. The same thing holds true uh, within uh, Dynamics and also within SharePoint. So just keep that in mind that it keeps you working in the tools you work in every day. So the task switching is kept to a minimum. So with that, I'd like to get to a demonstration. So, First, I just real briefly, uh, so many of you may have already seen Project for the Web, but the idea here is a project home would give you access to all your project plans in one place. And I'm just gonna open one for the sake of just viewing that and be able to look at you know, the common things that you might see uh, in a Project for the Web plan. Uh, in this case, it does the basics. It really gives you the ability to structure a work breakdown structure, you know, highlight starts and finishes and durations, assign resources to it, uh, even label tasks in here such that you can categorize them in certain ways and put your effort and your dependencies on there. You know, things that you couldn't do in planner with dependencies and real scheduling. Uh, the ability to very quickly be able to name a project and establish very quickly, you know, the calendar it's on and when it starts and other parameters around that, and then just work with it very easily in a grid format here. But we also have the ability to look at this and work it in a board, much like planner, only, only there's a real scheduling engine behind it. And we could actually do these things and this is buckets by the type of work or maybe look at them by, you know, who who's assigned to the work, et cetera. And we can look at these in a variety of different ways as we work with this in a more Kanban fashion. The timeline view, it pretty much allows us to um, look at this and work with it as a Gantt chart, drag and drop dependencies, et cetera, and be able to work with it in that fashion. And it even adds things like charting like you have in, in Planner. Uh, be able to understand the people that are on this and how they're doing on their tasks, et cetera. And just recently in, in, integrated the ability to add some goals for this particular project that you can at least identify uh, in, that, in, in that realm. But the key here is, is that it's easy, quick to get started, and it's uh, lightweight to use and not hard to learn. So for that casual project manager, it can meet that need. Now, that being said, 
when we want to go add the accelerator to the mix. And let me open up uh, an instance of the project accelerator. So instead of just opening up your individual projects like I just did, one, you know, one by one, it's just coming instead of from files, it's coming from a repository. This accelerator in this Power App provides capabilities at a portfolio level that Project for the Web by itself does not provide. So, for example, uh, if I go into the projects area, as I start saving projects into Dataverse, these projects will appear in a portfolio listing here that I can work with and do things like have different fields of portfolio level data to characterize and categorize these things, to be able to possibly have red, yellow, green KPIs, etc. But the idea is it brings it all together into a portfolio list or register here that you can work with. Now, if I go into a particular project in here, the project schedule that I showed you in Project for the Web is only one component. For example, you can now start putting summary data in here so that you can categorize your projects and characterize them. You can actually have the project level or portfolio level data as a summarization of things like schedule and effort and you know, financial information, et cetera. Um, you could potentially have had a project request that brought business case data over from that request. And then, yes, you can have your tasks in here, which is essentially in the context of this Power App, bringing in your project for the web schedule so that you can work with it in here in the context of this Power App. And then in addition to that, you might have a risk register where you're actually adding risks in here, where you're adding issues, where you're adding change requests. All those things are captured here and captured in that same uh, Power Apps and Dataverse repository. And then the status reports that we talked about where it may be capturing the high level objective data, but then give you the ability to put your narratives in here on things like accomplished activities, planned activities, and then the additional comments you might wanna have on hindrances or uh, blockers that you might have. The key there is, is that this provides that capability provides the ability to roll those projects up into individual programs should you like to do that you know how many projects are contained in each of those programs for example and it does give you the ability to have a project request area so that you could actually capture that data and those requests and then promote them into projects at some point but that's the extent of what we've got here in the power app itself in this accelerator now we talked about using one plan to augment that and if I flip a switch here real quick to have an instance here where one plan is augmenting the accelerator, you'll notice first off on this left-hand navigation here that a lot more things are available to me now. And as I go through here, if I go into, for example, I'll just start with where I was before. If I go into the project register just in the um, um, accelerator and I open up a particular project with one plan into the mix, if you notice, I have a few more things in here. For example, uh, I might be able to now start doing time phase resource planning in here. That would allow me to come in here and put a resource plan in place such that I could um, plan on a time phase basis the resource needs, either top-down planning or bottoms up. So in this particular case, I can plan in terms of hours like you see here. I can plan in terms of percentages or FTEs and be able to understand what I need, and I can plan generically or with named individuals here, right? And I can either do this from a top-down perspective if I'm not assigning resources or really planning my resource capacity from that bottoms-up schedule task level, I can do this here at this project level just as easily as I can come down here at a scheduled level and basically have it built up from the different tasks that are assigned to that person within the project for the web plan. The idea here is, is that you can get a very capable resource capacity planning added to the accelerator at a portfolio level. And I'll show you that in a more uh, uh, comprehensive way, because right now we're just looking at it in the context of a single project, yet we're looking at also where else um, Daniel, for example, here is assigned. And I can see that given the combination of this assignment and the others, he is over allocated, even though he's showing only 78% uh, allocated to this particular area. The same thing holds true with the financial plan. One plan has those financial planning capabilities that can be added into the accelerator. And for those folks that need to do this on a more time phased and more granular cost category basis, this gives us the ability to add that into the mix uh, at any given point in time and just make it part of your normal course uh, within the context of this. 
So here I'm looking at a combination of budget and forecast, but I can also look at, you know, actuals, revenue, benefits, and those types of things and build a cost category structure that makes sense to me. Um, on top of that, I, you know, if we take this to a greater level, uh, I showed you resource planning within the context of an individual project. But if I want to take this uh, to a more global level across the entire portfolio, I could actually look at that capabilities that I want to show you here in one plan directly. So the resource plans that we came up with in the individual projects are all aggregated. And the view I was attempting to show you within the accelerator would be something like this where, for example, I would look at the individual resources or the generic resources that I've assigned and look at this in terms of hours or FTEs, et cetera. And now from a singular place, I can look and see why is Jack Barker overloaded? And I can see because he's on a myriad of projects to certain degrees in this top-down planning. And the idea here is that if I had this type of visibility, unlike this demo data, I would be unlikely to quadruple book him for the month of May or over triple book him in the month of February because I'd have visibility into these things before I assigned him yet another piece of work. So this is true from the top-down approach with a more top-down capacity plan, or as I said, that bottomed up, uh, more schedule-oriented type of view, that comes into play here um, as we um, you know, look at Jack and then see what projects he's on and then look at the specific tasks he's on within those projects that roll up from the bottom up. And the same thing holds true with actuals as we look at the timesheets and things like that and the data that comes in from those. Um, outside of that, we also have more, let's just say flexible portfolio views than just those list views you saw in the accelerator. For example, I'm looking at uh, KPI oriented views here. I can see the linkages to other scheduling tools that are here like Project for the project professional or a project for the web or Smartsheet, for example. Uh, the idea here is, is that you can flexibly build portfolio hierarchies here as well, where I'm looking at, say, portfolios and programs and projects and epics, and then display them in that portfolio uh, hierarchy uh, in order to uh, build that out, look at the portfolios and programs within that, and then be able to even grant access to these projects based upon. Uh, uh, the hierarchy and say, who do I want to share this with uh, at the portfolio level and below or, or in different portfolios or programs, et cetera. So those are the kind of things that we can work with in here, as well as looking at the portfolio, much like we looked at Project for the Web in different formats. We have list views. We can look at our portfolio from a more of a, a schedule oriented view and see how we're doing from a, a timeline and schedule basis and do prioritizations as well and be able to look at it in that regard. We also have the ability to look at things like boards uh, and be able to look at our portfolio from a board perspective and work with it with different columns and swim lanes that we set up and be able to show statuses and that, but still get access to all the details around those projects just by opening up the um, um, details around those elements uh, at any given point in time within the solution. And then I had mentioned in the slides the roadmap views. These are just different perspectives of the same portfolio data. In this case, I'm organizing by business unit, or you know, maybe I could or, you know, organize them by product line or by program or whatever it might be, and be able to have those things. Um, this is where I'm actually looking at these roadmap views with things like milestones and key events elevated into these milestone diamonds that show up uh, in those portfolios. On top of that, you know, we can have all kinds of dashboards and visualizations. For example, um, you know, we talked about being able to do some planning in with Project for the Web and um, Project um, and, and with One Plan without necessarily using the Power App if that's something that was a hindrance to you. In this particular case, I could come in here and go, let me look at a particular, you know, Project for the Web plan. This Project for the Web plan that I have in here uh, allows me to um, connect to Project for the Web like we did before, allow us to have all the elements uh, in a plan that we want, as well as being able to just drill into a project 
and be able to look at things like what are the relationships to other projects with our visualizer, being able to look at, you know, what else it's related to or associated to in the solution. In this case, I'm aligned to certain strategies or key results of those strategies, and this project is aligned with that, as well as aligned with certain products and applications, et cetera, and business capabilities. And those visualizations are things that you can uh, get from within one plan. If I drill in further, say, into this project, and I go down into, let me go into a different project. I'm gonna go down into, say, a work plan for this. This could either be derived right in here in one plan or could be derived from another tool set like Project for the Web. In this particular case, I'm looking at the schedule. This one was built from a template right here within one plan, but if you choose to start with, you could connect and build your plan over in Project for the Web, Microsoft Planner, Smartsheet, or Microsoft Project Professional at this point, and then be able to have that be what drives and is where the source of this data is coming from and rolling up into the portfolio meaning you have all kinds of flexibility on what you'd like to work with there. Now, the areas that we have in here on strategic alignment allow us to go in here and look at things like, you know, building OKRs, objectives and key results, and being able to align your projects with those. So, for example, if I came into this particular key result and I went into the details on that, I could actually take these things and align them with certain projects. And I can see here that I have certain projects and epics that I'm actually aligned with here. And if I go back out to this from this perspective, I could always visualize what these things are related to. So I can come in here and look at the visualizer from the strategic perspective and be able to come in here and say, what else are we related to? And this strategy and this key result are related to all these different projects and these different products and these different applications, meaning we can get that full view as we go through here. Now. The what if analysis is another key piece. And the what if analysis allows us to come in and build models. And we can select projects based on criteria and enter them into specific models that we wanna do what if analysis on. Here we're doing an IT model where the candidate projects we're looking at are up to 122 different projects. Now, you can establish thresholds. You can establish limits on things like resources and dollars and targets you might have for things like benefits. And in the short time we have here today, let's just say I've saved a couple different scenarios in here that I might be able to use. So in this particular case, let's just say I wanted to look at a scenario that was done where I had a $20 million budget and I had to select and deselect and change the timing on projects. It, out of those mixes of projects, only 80 projects are selected. And these are the projects that didn't get selected that are out in this particular scenario. Um, and if I came in here and I wanted to look at uh, the financials around that that fit in that, you could see that to fit into this budget, we had the visibility into this thing as we selected these things. And as we looked at, say, the timing on these, we might have to do a scenario where we actually took these things and maybe move these things out in time, et cetera, in order to reflect uh, and fit into the budgets that we have. We can also do that from a resource perspective. So as we look in here and we say, given this scenario and the selections of the projects up above, this is what it's going to take from a resource perspective. And this is telling me I still have some work to go because I still don't have the resources to do this. But each time I deselect a project, for example, it will go in and actually recalculate uh, the resourcing required until I get to the mix that I'm looking for. Now, ultimately, if I go to compare and I do a bunch of different scenarios, I can actually compare them and actually start looking at what the mix is in here and what, how they relate to one another, how the details are uh, on those as I compare, say, the 20 million with the $25 million um, um, scenario and look and see what's in, what's out, what's the priorities on the projects that are in or out on those types of things. Or I might look at some dashboard views that does this more graphically where I come and compare uh, you know, scenarios in that way and look at graphically the different parameters of things like budget and effort and how many different projects we might have in there, et cetera. And then we also have traditional charting in here that allows us to look at this from a more traditional bubble chart uh, basis on a, a portfolio management. And you can establish different chart views in here, but this is a classic benefits versus prioritization. And the bubble is the size of the uh, size of the project, of the budget wise. And the idea here is I can see that uh, with high benefit and high prioritization in the upper right, I have some of our bigger projects up in here, 
But if I overlay the ones that didn't make the trip, I can see that there's some gray ones in here that we didn't select that would be in the upper right. And I probably want to understand why that is and possibly be able to look at uh, how those things are related through the visualizations that we talked about earlier on. Now, I will say this. Another key piece is, you know, the ever-increasing advent of AI. And coming with one plan as part of the core solution is our new AI assistant, Sophia. And Sophia GPT allows you to ask different questions. So, for example, if I come in here and let me just get a broader data set in here to, for, um, for Sophia to work with. I can have it do some analysis for us and, um, you know, we can do all kinds of things and you can experiment with this on your own um, as you trial this. But if I come in here and I load, you know, that data set uh, for, um, for this view on the project summary data, um, it will give me the ability to leverage that data um, in an analysis with Sophia. There we go. So with this data set, let me just ask it a question. Let me ask something like, given the data that it has here, let's say, let me ask you a simple question. What projects should we consider canceling? And they give you some suggestions on things up above. There's like that you can try, but it'll do its thinking. It'll analyze all the data that it has available, not only in here, but in the um, Azure OpenAI, which is Microsoft's iteration of OpenAI that it, had, it had acquired. So it's got all the care and protections of the Microsoft Cloud, not like the general uh, OpenAI and ChatGPT you have out on the internet. So here it's saying, given this, um, you might be evaluating this, and project social networking integration has an active status, but is at risk in terms of schedule, effort health and issue health. Additionally, the project has a high number of tasks at risk and off track. The project AI for remote weather stations, it has proposed status, but it's off track. It's So it's basically giving me its rationale for why these projects might want to be canceled, especially relatively low prioritization scores and those types of things that we're working with. So it's given me some analysis that would take me a while to come up with in looking at these things. I can even ask it follow-on questions. So I say out of this, I could say, um, which of these projects is the highest risk? And let me ask it that. So you can ask it like follow-on questions. It says, basically, on given, the given data, it says AI for remote weather workstations is the highest risk that um, though it's still in the proposed stage, um, it's effort health and financial health and other aspects of this that it's looking at as the details of the plan, puts it at risk based upon the resource mix, et cetera. So essentially it's giving us assessment that this would might be, if we're gonna cancel one project, this might be the one that we do it with. So there's all kinds of things we can do, but just be aware that this capability sits here within one plan. Um, outside of that, I think let's go back to the slides and wrap up here. So in summary, you know, Microsoft is in the process of reimagining Project and Project Online. There's a new Microsoft solution built on the Power Platform called Project for the Web. There is a PPM accelerator uh, in Power Apps that was built by OnePlan Solutions for Microsoft. And the new Microsoft solution, though, does not have full feature parity with Project Online. And the PPM accelerator with OnePlan extends and goes beyond the capabilities of Project Online. It also adds, OnePlan also adds strategic portfolio management capabilities, as well as provides solutions and services to ensure the customer transition any migration that's required, and make sure they get value and success out of this. So in one case, we showed the project accelerator with one plan, provides a modern solution that extends beyond project online, or we could just do it in one plan, leveraging the project for the web data and having one plan do all the portfolio management capabilities as well. Either one, you can get value out of Microsoft project for the web. Now the solution comparison, if you use project online, there's a certain set of capabilities in there. 
Now, if you use Project for the Web with the Accelerator, you get extended capabilities over that. Um, uh, we get some of its capabilities, but if you bring in the Accelerator with one plan or Project for the Web with one plan on its own, it checks more of the boxes and gives you a more comprehensive solution. We do have a migration workshop and we can help assess that with you. We have migration tools to help you get to where you're going. So that the idea is if you have uh, data in Project Online today or Microsoft Project Plans in Microsoft Project, we can get those over into a solution in a version of which we showed you today. Any one of those, whether it be Power Apps based or One Plan based using Project for the Web. So you can free trial this stuff. If you own Project for the Web or Microsoft Project, there is a Project Accelerator. If you go up to App Source and you go to here, uh, OnePlan actually facilitates this instead of going to GitHub, you can get it now and try it out. You just need to have someone who has access to allow uh, uh, Power Apps and the Accelerator to be enabled within your organization. So you might need an administrator to authorize that, but there is a free trial available. There's also a free trial of OnePlan itself up in App Source. And you can go up there and get that from AppSource and try. And I would recommend the Strategic Portfolio Management Solution or the Adaptive Project Portfolio Management Solution because they have the most full breadth of capabilities in them. But you can get up there and do a free trial there and reach out to us. And we're happy to chaperone you and assist you through that whole trial process on either score, whether with the accelerator and with uh, um, one plan. We could just do a roadmap workshop if you're just interested in what it's going to take to get where you're going. We could look at your current use of solutions and tools, kind of look at where you want to go in your desired future state and requirements, and give you an idea of what that roadmap looks like, and even a total cost evaluation. You probably own a good chunk of the tools you're going to need, so it might only be an incremental investment. So a free trial we can help you with, a roadmap workshop we can help you with. Um, and I gave you a very high-level generalized demonstration today. Um, and it's, uh, you may have more requirements than what we showed you here today. And we're happy to schedule a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo to address your specific needs. Just reach out to us at contact at oneplan.ai and we'll get somebody to reach out to you to schedule that. You can even do your own research and go to oneplan.ai on our website. And there's a lot of information out there about our tools and our options and those types of things as well. If you're not ready to engage at this point yet. So we'd like to thank you for your time today. Um, you know, we, we, our tagline these days is the power of one, is bringing all these things together into one form, into one hub, so that you can do all your project portfolio management, all your strategic elements of that, and even go from the intake all the way through to the execution of the projects. So with that, I'd like to encourage you to just reach out to us, engage. We'd love to engage with you um, and see if we can help you further your cause and where you're going to go next uh, uh, in the Microsoft journey. Have a great day.